one. In principle, the work of art has always been reproducible. Objects made by humans could always be copied by humans. Replicas were made by pupil pupils in practicing their craft, by masters in disseminating their works, and finally by third per parties in pursuit of profit. But the technological reproduction of art artworks is something new. Having appeared intermittently in history at widely spaced intervals, it is now being adopted with ever-increasing intensity. The Greeks had only two ways of technologically reproducing works of art, casting and stamping. Bronzes, terracottas, and coins were the only artworks they could produce in large numbers. All others were unique and could not be technologically reproduced. Graphic art was first made technologically reproducible by the woodcut, long before written language became reproducible by movable type. The enormous change brought about in literature by movable type, the technological reprodu reproducibility of writing, are well known. But they are only a special case, though an important one, of the phenomenon here from the perspective of world history. In the course of the Middle Ages, the woodcut was supplemented by engraving and etching, and the at the beginning of the 19th century by lithography. Lithography marked a fundamentally new stage in the technology of reproduction. This is this much more direct process distinguished by the fact that the drawing is traced on a stone rather than incised on a block of wood or etched on a copper plate, first made it possible for graphic art to make its products not only in large numbers as previously, but in daily changing variations. Lithography en enabled graphic art to pr provide an illustrated accompaniment to everyday life. It began to keep pace with movable type printing, but only a few decades after the invention of lithography, graphic art was surpassed by photography. For the first time, photography f freed the hand from the most important artistic tasks in the process of pictorial re reproduction, tasks that now devolved solely upon the eye looking into the lens. And since the eye perceives more swiftly than the hand can draw, the process of pictorial reproduction was enorm enormously accelerated so that it could keep, now keep pace with speech. A cinematographer shooting a scene in the studio captured the image at the speed of an actor's speech. Just as the illustrated newspaper virtually lay hidden within lithography, so the sound film was latent in photography. The technological reproduction of sound was tackled at the end of the last century. These convergent endeavors made it possible to conceive of the situation that Paul Valeri describes in this sentence. Just as water, gas, and electricity are brought into our houses from far off to satisfy our needs with minimal effort, so we shall supply with visual or auditory images, which will appear and disappear as simple movement of the hand, hardly more than a sign. Around 1900, technological reproduction not only had reached a standard that permitted it to be reprodu repro permitted to reproduce all known works of art, profoundly modifying their effect, but it also captured a place of its own among the art artistic processes. Engaging this standard, we would do well to study the impact which, with impact which it, its two different manifestations the reproductions of artwork and the art of film are having on art in its traditional forms.